you've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and to give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Mobiles, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, Mango Voice, Community Healthcare Resources, Life Chiropractic College West, Trackstat, and Msculpt. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 461 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I am your producer, Luke Millette, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Michael Coates, Esquire. And in this episode, we discuss to be aware of the No Surprises Act. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. This is our second time we've had Michael Coates, Esquire on. I'm really uh, blessed to have him on today and talk about some things that are very meaningful to our chiropractic audience. Um, And, you know, I'm I'm sure he's going to mention some things about this No Surprise Act. We're pretty much going to do this interview on a straight vertical line of how we can help save uh, the medical providers and chiropractors about uh, lack of knowledge on something I think is going to be super important for them to have a whole, you know, a resource. You guys need a resource to tell you what this is all about. And I think that Michael's going to be able to lay that out for you. But before we get into episode two or to 461, I just want to let everyone know why we do what we do over here at Cairo Hustle. Um, freedom of speech is important. Everyone that watches this knows that. Family freedom and medical freedom are both important. Um, so that's the big why, why we do this. But we also do this because we protect BJ Palmer's sacred trust. If you don't know what that is, go to your favorite search engine and look that up. You'll know a whole lot more about why chiropractic really matters as a profession. Then we also support subluxation-based chiropractic. Um, That's a big word. Um, I know a lot of people out there that are in the um, attorney field uh, might not know that word. And there's probably a lot of chiropractors that um, need to be reminded what that word means. So... We also believe in the old school model of chiropractic, innate intelligence and universal intelligence and that when someone gets adjusted, man or woman, it connects them to physical to the spiritual. And that's my intro and Michael Coates, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks James. And by the way, thanks for just serving as a voice for chiropractic. You know, I, it gets so under appreciated, not just by the public that doesn't know how great value the chiropractic is, but even by medical peers. And the science is proving that's wrong. And it's proving how great chiropractic is and what it means to patients. Because, you know, if you are your healthiest, that's the only way you can be your best. And it's the only way then you can be your happiest. So thank you for bringing joy and happiness to a lot of people as through really ripple makers of all the chiropractors out there, all of you really matter. Stay the course. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's important to mention too, is um, people are starting to real understand that chiropractic is a port of entry profession for anybody's health concerns. And I know that being in the PI world, P, uh, what is it? PI made easy. Yeah. Our company's name PI made easy, personal injury made easy. And, you know, it, when you bring that in, you know, that there's only one industry segment where chiropractic is the lead, the number one medical specialty. And you can't name anything else but personal injury. It's often the door entrance into chiropractic that most consumers have never experienced before. And so when you get to wow them, because, of course, in PI, we all know if patients comply with treatment plans, hey, guess what? They get healthier. Well, That's the thing about personal injury because they have a financial stake. They don't have gaps in treatment. They show up, they do the treatment plan. Guess what? They get healthy. So not only do they make some money up their case, they love you because you got them healthy and it's all this great feeling. And in fact, James, this is going to tie into what we talk about when I get to the positive parts of this new law that is such a government reach out and burden on all of you. 
that you don't even know about. We'll get into that in a little bit, but it's really important. And it, I think you wanted to ask about, so PI Made Easy, you know, what I do is coach, teach, and train with me and my team on really for providers how to be better business owners. You guys are incredible healers. You just generally suck at being a great business person. <laughs> and we need you not just surviving. What we need you to do is to thrive. And that comes by putting in really good processes, being profitably paid, and accelerating growth. And that's kind of the formula that I and my team teach as being a power practice. Today, we're going to get into this nuance that applies to not just personal injury. I don't care if you have, if it's a PI practice, if it's a cash practice, if it is health insurance, this law we're about to talk about hits you all, and it's going to hit you all much harder than you think next year. Yeah. And I, I think without further ado, it's called the No Surprise Act. And I, I foreshadowed this in our intro today. And I, I don't know a whole lot about this. So when you're like, you know, you saw me down in uh, St. Louis and we were talking about things and about getting on another show, I was like, well, this is relevant. Let's fast track this. Let's get it um, pr produced so people can at least start to get some information on it. Because I know you're doing some type of a boot camp, uh, uh, online boot camp this weekend on the 10th, which today's the 6th. So we have a couple of days for people to join it. I'll actually put the link in the comments today in the description of this uh, this interview. But um, you also said that this will be an evergreen product also, correct? Yes. I mean, you know, and this is not going to be for continuing education because I do that for other states, but it's usually very topical still as I, as I teach at conferences. This needs a deep dive because what it really needs is the support of your staff who just doesn't know what they need to do in this area. And we got to get them trained to make your life easier and your back protected protect your six and the NSA is out to bite you in the butt. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I think that James, you know, don't very, if I had you all raise your hand, if you've never heard of the no surprises act before, you probably, most of you are going to raise it, right? Hand raised. <laughs> I mean, 80% of, of providers out there have never heard of it and even fewer than are complying it. I was just uh, lecturing at Florida national just this past summer. 750 chiropractors in the room. We asked that same question. And the FCA has all these resources online behind, you know, the, for their members. And only 10% had even heard of it that were sitting in the room to an organization that publishes about it. It's flying so much under the radar, it's scaring me because we're going to get in some of the, the bad things here. And you really need to take note on this. But don't feel bad that you don't know. In fact, by learning now and really getting into that deep dive, I say December 10th or whenever you then can do it later on, but I recommend as fast as possible, you'll be ahead of all of your peers and you're going to be able to protect all that hard work you and your staff have been doing. Yeah. So um, why do, why do, why is there such a, a lack of knowledge around this law? Well, you know, I think that when the government rolled this out, uh, it's called the No Surprises Act. You know, I think really aptly named because it's all about not to have consumers surprised by medical bills they didn't expect. And that's actually a really good thing. And I think the medical industry needs to take a look at itself and we caused this problem. There wasn't enough transparency. And for the chiropractic, it doesn't mean when you give a patient, here's my fee schedule. That doesn't tell them how much something costs. It'd be like, I go to buy a car and here's all the parts of the car and what everything costs but I don't know how it's assembled together or what applies. So we really have to blame ourselves for not doing it, which then got what happens. You don't do it. The government comes in and that's what happens. So it's to prevent consumers from being surprised. But two other things. One is it allows we Americans to shop for a better deal. Who doesn't like to get a better deal? Well, that's what it wants you to do. The, the last thing is, and we all know this, the government wants to ratchet down your reimbursement rate. It wants to pay you less and anything they can do to help that they're going to do. This may be the largest thing they've done on this because it gives power to the individual patient. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I look at it from a couple of different things as I'm learning more about it as you speak. And I see it as a um, kind of a, a easy play for a standardization but I see it as kind of a challenging play for the practitioner 
And I see it as kind of a challenging play for giving the power to the person and the public to standardize how they get uh, a plan. And I think it's good that people should do that, but I think that the the open market might have a bit of a challenge with uh, you know capitalism. So we'll have to see how this thing rolls out and fairness for all parties involved. And uh, I think that there's a lot for people to, to get to know when it comes to um, their own um, benefits. But as we know, um, and specifically in the chiropractic space, it's been more challenging than ever um, for chiropractors to get reimbursed through uh, you know, normal strategies of insurance reimbursement. PI, different story. Um, people that are actually compliant and follow your your processes and your system and take your coaching and and work with you and your team, yeah, that's that's a a much easier process than dealing with your run of the mill insurance case. No, um, no, that ends up being recession PI is recession proof too. But but here's the thing: I think the government in this No Surprises Act it has not gone on to a publicity campaign, mm -hmm. and we're entering into a presidential election coming up soon, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they just finished the last elections. But you got two years for the next presidential election. So by the summer of next year, especially towards the fall, they're going to really ramp that up. And can you think of a better thing to publish out there? Hey, here's what I did. Empowering the consumer on medical costs. And, and they're going to apprise and do ads, I think, to alert the patients of their rights, which means you're going to lose your billings. It's well, gonna the other part of this, too, is a lot of the uh, I see it gearing more towards people looking for a least invasive model to stay healthy longer, which is, I think is a big win for the chiropractic profession and for the people seeking chiropractic care. It'll make more sense to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that, uh, as people know, um, one of the leading causes of bankruptcy right now is medical bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a huge problem for our economy and it's a huge problem for the individual because they get to the end of their rope and the end of their years, and they're pretty much at ruin. They don't know what to do. They've, they've been put in such a big hole that they've lost their home. Yeah. So why not take the lead when medical debt is so big and, and patients are afraid of going to the doctor? In fact, mm -hmm. many, they've shown, I think, 14% literally don't go because they're worried about the debt. And another 14% delay it because of the potential debt. That's like 20, that's almost 30% of people just because of the fear of the debt. So we've got to do things. And I think the NSA is a, actually a really good step. I just think it's going to be misused and abused, but I think it is a good step in the right place. And then when you learn to take advantage of things, you're going to actually really like this, I think. So let's talk silver linings of the No Surprise Act. What do you see this? I mean, I, I've kind of spoken from the, the advocate of chiropractic <laughs> mind and like, why I think that this is important for the profession, but I also saw like the trouble in it too. So where do you see the good in this? Well, let, let's start with the bad and the ugly, because I think I'd like to kind of lay out the bad and the ugly first. We, we touch a couple of things, but I think we got to do a little bit more. So the first is government fines, right? They can go up to $10,000 per incident. That was for anything you weren't doing to comply as of January of this year, but they pushed that out to starting January of next year. And they say they're going to enforce it starting just January. What is it now? December. Okay. So I think they may push that a little bit more, but who's to say? The bigger danger is this provider patient dispute resolution or PPDR process. A patient can literally spend 25 bucks, go online, type away, fill out a form. And if they qualify, meaning from how much the bill is off and within a certain amount of time, which is four months, 120 days from receiving the bill, they put that dispute in, and I'm telling you, if you didn't do anything to comply, the government's not going to let you off the hook here. They want to show that it's enforcing. That means you're going to lose, and they're going to make sure this is effective. The other thing is realize in your normal practice, you know, you don't have third parties scrutinizing over what you do. I mean, you do a personal injury, you know, attorneys, adjusters, others. So uh, those in the PI are a little more used to this, but for you that are not, you're going to have now another person going in to look at what you did. Even what the patient said was wrong, they're going to expand that look into other things of what you did with the patient and make sure everything is medically necessary, that your diagnostic codes were tied to your notes, tied to your actual treatment. And they're going to look for that all to carry. And if not, boom, 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 you're going to lose. And then there's the misuse and abuse. We, we're in a recession. And the question is going to be, how bad is it? In the end, when people need money, they look at where do they turn. 
So patience, if it's between you who they like and getting their children fed or things done, you're going to lose. And so what they're going to do is take advantage of this. And one of the things is a thing called flare. You know, you, we all have flare-ups, right? Patients that get treated, come back. Well, the problem with the flare-up here is, is it real? It could be a patient that wants to re-trigger the timeline that's involved in the No Surprises Act to extend it longer. And you've got attorneys that are going to literally threaten you on personal injury and others. Because you didn't comply with the act, you got to waive your bill. And that's going to be happening. And the last one I'd say for the negatives is, look, we've got a new staff burden. You've got more paperwork, patient mm-hmm. consents, good faith estimates, the supporting documents. you got to file away as medical records. These are staff burdens. They've got to learn to comply it again. Watch your six. So as opposed to fighting it, realize you've got to learn to embrace it. So that's kind of the bad and the ugly. And I like the old Clint Eastwood movie, you know, the good, bad and the ugly. So we kind of reverse that hit the bad and the ugly first. Um, so no, what do you think, J- James? Is there anything on that you want to hit first before we get to the silver line? You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Hytronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, Mango Voice, Community Healthcare Resources, Life Chiropractic College West, Trackstat, and Msculpt. Let's hustle. Well, I, I, I once again, as a, um, you know, an information receiver, um, these are a lot of things that are new to me and understanding that we've actually allowed somebody into basically the patient file deeper. Um, that's a concern for me and the profession, I believe, because I believe that there's a high level of compliance already. And I think that it's another way to be a barrier of entry for people to actually have and receive uh, quality care because it basically causes a bureaucracy within the medical profession that wasn't there before. And it's putting more pressure on the practitioner to do more in order to stand in line with what they've already been doing. And I think that that's really a concern for me on this other side of the spectrum. When I think about, like you said, the burden that it puts on the staff, the burden for compliancy and instilling like, you know, the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, I take an old practitioner and, and force them into a compliancy when they've been practicing for 30 or 40 years, doing things the right way or 10 years or five years or two years. And then you're like, hey, by the way, now you have to follow this other medical model that might not work best for your profession. You, you are so spot on, James, on this. And I mean, I wish I had better news. I wish you could say you don't have to comply, but you do. It's law. It's not going away. It is here to stay. Now, it may be changed and tweaked as we go forward, you know, special interest coming in with other monies, who knows what, what may happen, but you've got to learn to comply. And then I'd say, look, there's bad things about about everything we do from eating to eating too much, drinking to drinking too much. But there's the good side, right? There's the things of the enjoyment you get on great food or the wonderful drink that you find that you just love and it's just that's your way to relax. So that's, I think, when we get to the good, the silver lining, the good part of the NSA. If we might address that a little bit now, like you were saying, I think- I'm, I'm really curious at this point. Like, what is good about this? <laughs> I know. I was, I was just teaching. You know, uh, I was just teaching this in another state, and again, they were going, "Oh my God, Michael, we feel so bad." I said, "Just listen to these other good things." I feel so like one is, I feel like I refer- people are going to want to burn the ships. <laughs> yeah. Well, one is I referred to the distrust in America. We got to do something. I think nothing is important than transparency and like freedom of speech and everything I think is based on integrity. We as people, we are people of our word. We do what we say when we say we're going to do it. Integrity matters and character counts. And I think in medicine, we need to, we should take more of the lead. And in the chiropractic, we can take more of that lead, I think here. Okay. And so I think that, that, that repairing the distrust through transparency, which is needed for integrity of anything, right? You, you name something that 
requires honesty and sincerity and really you're going to come down to transparencies involved being honest about yourself um, making sure that like in pi that the other attorney is giving you the information so you can make a good business decision if you want to reduce as an example right transparency goes through all of this so that's number one i think number two is like the other side of that little coin that you had about someone now looking into my notes well the good side is literally it's going to make you a better diagnostician and documentarian because you really have to be looking at the diagnostic codes you're using and ensuring you are using proper ones that the treatment is medical medically necessary and listen let's be honest there are far too many providers out there that are not doing things right they're adding on extra codes they shouldn't be adding on they're whatever they're doing people are not doing it right for whatever reason that they have we need to stop that the more we do it right, the more we bill reasonably, the more we then hold to and get paid that amount. That's how we work to solve the problem for chiropractic, right? Integrity, transparency. Um, the other thing, which I think is a little more common sense if you really think about it, the next positive is you're going to have improved patient outcomes. Isn't that what you're doing this for, right? And improved patient relationships. Here's why. If you boil down the NSA, what does it really require? What it requires is term care plans, right? You're familiar with this a little bit on the wellness side, you know, treatment over time, buy a package. That's a really good way to actually make your practice worth more. Well, now they're making term care plans in a way by the estimation. So in PI, for example, you've got to lay out literally all the treatments, what you're doing, when you're doing them, how much it's all costing at the very beginning of care, in fact, in advance of care generally. So when they get used to this, uh, when you've got to go over these things, when you've got to go over what it costs you, it means you're going to go over, they're going to say, well, why do I need that? Why do I need this? More informed patients make better informed decisions that they are then more satisfied with when it's done. The time you're spending with them, your staff is going to improve the patient bonding. And I think through it all, you're going to have even better customer patient experiences as a result. It's going to force a little more time. It's going to force a little more discussions on things that concern them. Maybe it didn't concern you as much, but I can tell you how much things cost and should I get it and why I should get it really does matter to the consumer. Me as a patient, I love chiropractic. I go, I go all the time just to keep myself you know, preventive and besides when I really have an injury. So I can tell you, that time matters. Well, it makes me once again, have a deeper question. Okay. And, and like, you're talking about compliance is a good thing. And I don't disagree. You're talking about having more patient relationship and longer. Uh, um, we call it in chiropractic PVA patient patient visit average. So it's mm -hmm. going to, it's going to increase the patient patient visit average. And you're saying it's going to potentially help make that practice more um, value based on case and based on care length of time. But also the part where I'm, you know, I think we just have to have more awareness around is there's going to have to be a subset like business that grows into the chiropractic profession that manages this type of like caseload, because honestly, to tell a chiropractor it's already seeing high volume or they're busy doing a practice and saying, hey, you have to do all this extra stuff, they're gonna have to hire more staff. They're gonna get have to get more support. They're gonna, the profession's gonna have to bud in a different direction where there's gonna be people that specialize in, in specifically catering to this, um, this world of, you know, compliancy and note taking and reporting. Okay. I don't think you're going to end up having to hire more staff. I do think you're going to need better trained staff. Like staff had to get trained on HIPAA, correct? I mean, privacy is huge and really important. We would all agree with that. We like privacy, right, for ourselves and it needs to be for our okay. patients. And this is, in a way, in these estimates and about your treatment, is also a medical record and is treated kind of like a HIPAA privacy in the document. So I think that as you better train the staff, like anything you do, it takes longer at first, then it becomes easier then it becomes the easiest part of the practice. There's also software that is going to be helping you. Like on December 10th, I'm going to go over what I've worked with one vendor on a software to help make it easier 
because I just wanted to see it being easier to be implemented, like what you're saying, to relieve some of the staff burden. So I think that there are ways to make it less intrusive of, of your staff, but but some things you can't, meaning depending upon when they schedule the appointment, how earlier they schedule it determines when they've got to get that good faith estimate before the appointment. Walk-ins, you can wait. Walk-ins, if they walk in or within three day business days, you could wait until really that next appointment after you've first seen them till you give them that extended care plan that you've got to give them now with a good faith estimate. So there are little nuances and things, but I don't think it's not going to be the burden I, you believe, I think, on adding new staff. I do think it's a burden on getting better trained staff, but the better that they're trained, the better it is for you and the more time that you get to save to treat the patient. Just, just as long as it doesn't become a hassle to the practitioner to be a, a specific, you know, practitioner that does what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's my real like calling card for this is like, as long as it doesn't take away from the, the practice and cause more turmoil because of it, I'm all for it. But mm -hmm. if it comes to like the, the person receiving care, like making attacks or claims or disillusionment between them receiving care back to that practice that's a problem for me and i think wow. that the people will see that as a problem too the practitioners will see that as a problem not just me as my early analysis on it but i do think that again i think the benefits will far outweigh the negatives over time and the other positive the last one i want to bring up is chiropractic has needed built-in collaboration you get that in pi in a way because you deal with other medical specialties as part of kind of quarterbacking the healthcare team you do the, you know, the, it's the chiropractor generally doing the referrals and PI to the imaging, to the pain specialist, you know, to whether it's a neurologist, it's usually the chiropractor that is doing that. Not in other areas, but the NSA is requiring that because you actually starting in January have to include co-providers and co-facilities in your good faith estimate. Yeah. Again, adding the burden, but now you've got to do this more collaborating with others. So again, I think that, that as you meld through this, you'll find that it's a pain in the butt to have to comply, but it's really good for chiropractic as an industry. It's really good for the patients. I think it leads to better patient outcomes. I think it's going to lead to more profitable practices. So while it might be, oh, I don't like this, I think in the end, it's going to be like when you have your teenager. You may not like this, but you know, you eat your eat your broccoli, you're going to be better for it, right? Well, just just as long as it doesn't stink up the profession with more stuff to like make the to take them away from their main thing. That's that's the only thing that I'm I'm you know have any type of inclination about you know causing attention to it. But the other part of this I think that is is really important for people to know is like like you said I know chiropractic quite well. Like I started out when we did um, handwritten notes every day, and we had to do like a report like a soap note on each patient each day, and those were all handwritten and they were on a travel card. So when a person came in, you recorded on a piece of paper everything that you did. And I think that that's good, you know, case management. And I don't think that any chiropractor goes out there and wants to do poor case management. So if your software actually says, click three buttons and we're done today, and that's compliancy, that's what the, the practitioner needs. They don't need a whole department set to actually go and do this stuff. Mm -hmm. They need a system that they can plug and play that clicks the three buttons for them and keeps them compliant. Yeah, man. And again, I, I don't want you to be, it is something to be worried about. You, If you don't get there and to learn about it, it's gonna hit you. You're gonna be hurt financially. That I promise you, it's not going away. Think of it this way. The 120 days for a patient to file the dispute doesn't run until the 120 days they've received that bill. Point of sale is fine because generally you're then going to just trail uh, four months from the date they've made that last payment. But in the end, if they're waiting like on lean and PI or other things, who's to say when the patient got it? How can you prove they got the bill? There's going to be issues and the government's going to be on their side. So learn about it. Get your arms around it. Get your staff trained on it and comply with it and then take advantage of these things, which again, that December 10th boot camp, I think if there was ever an area that needed a deep dive, that needed you to really go into the different areas, this is it. So December 10th for four hour period, I've got myself and some other experts, including even that some of the solution experts to talk about this, to help you, you know, to get with your peers. Uh, if you go to pimadeeasy.com forward slash NSA 
dash bootcamp. That's where you can go to look for this bootcamp and to sign up and register. And I would do it now because, again, it's coming up on the 10th. If you miss it for any reason, realize I will have another down the road. But every week that you miss this, you are putting yourself more at risk to not comply and what you have exposed. And being an attorney by background, I'm a big believer in risk transfer and risk avoidance. That's what this is. You want to transfer risk. You want to avoid it and then you want to take advantage of benefits wherever you can find them and there are a lot here well i, I think that we had a really good back and forth today about the pros the cons the grays the blacks and the whites and i think that we talked a little bit about what happens when people don't we talked a little bit about what happens to the practice and the individual themselves and if there's any overreach and what this looks like uh potentially as it develops and becomes more mainstream and like a lot of things in government settings and standardization it might be something that's here today and gone tomorrow we never know how how deep rooted something actually sticks with uh, policy and how long it actually has a long-term effect so hopefully this is a good outcome and you guys can educate people on saturday for the four hours that you have them for and uh once again do you want to let people know where they can come on uh, the, the website no, and I do and even more than that, I think because, you know, Jim, my staff and I really applaud you for what you're doing and for the profession is for all of your network, those who are listening, because I want to help all of you. And so my team and I would like to offer all of you a 30 percent discount on that. It's not an it's not an expensive um, seminar as it is, but we want to save you wherever we can. So you'll get a 30 percent reduction using the key, the code word hustle as in Cairo Hustle. So you put hustle in there at that pimadeeasy.com forward slash NSA dash bootcamp and put it there. And if you lose somehow that, just go to pimadeeasy.com and you'll be able to find it from our main website over through that as well. And this will be evergreen because there's that and there'll be other intensives on other areas like in personal injury, you're going to want med pay, PIP, you know, how to negotiate with attorneys and other things that you'll want to get apprised of. And that's from PIMADEZ.com. Um, it's all about helping you be, remember, not just great healers, but great business owners too, where you're uplifting your staff, rewarding them, rewarding yourself in the end. So you've got more time, more freedom, so you can do what you want, when you want, with who you want. Right, James? Isn't that what we all want to try to see them all have? Yeah, and that's why we, we do this. And I think that's why this conversation was so valuable and important to people that actually tune in and get it today. So, Michael, I want to thank you for being a part of Cairo Hustle and being on episode 461 and uh, sharing. I'll put the links as he was talking about in the um, comments below this, this interview. And uh, just really appreciate you sharing so openly and uh, being helpful and uh, just kind of guiding the, the ship to shore. Um, with good information because there's a lot of people out there, even in the chiropractic world that I work with as new patients and as individuals looking for care, most people just don't know where to go or who to trust. And they end up, like you said earlier on in our conversation, not even going to the doctor. So um, I think that a lot of times the avoidance um, becomes the, the norm. And if we make that the norm, that this could be a huge problem for all the medical world, not just chiropractic. And I think that that's where I was leading most of my uh, segue to is that if we don't find a way to actually use this wisely, it could be a bumbling problem for a bunch of people and potentially be a huge problem for the medical industry as a whole. Thank so, you again, James. Thanks for all you are, what you do and who you are. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you soon, my friend, and uh, have a great night um, over there in the, the City of Lights. Hi. Right. Take care, buddy. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.